During the summer of 2003, events in the North and Eastern United States involving a strange, evil like creature sparked a brief local media interest. Before an apparent blackout was enacted, little or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were mysteriously destroyed. Primarily focused on rural New York State and found in Idaho, self proclaimed witnesses told stories of their encounter with a creature of unknown origin. Emotion ranged from extremely traumatic levels of fright and discomfort to almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While their published versions are no longer in record, the memories remain powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. Early 2006, the collaboration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents dating between the 12th century and the present day, spanning four continents and in almost all cases, stories were identical. I had been in touch with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. Suicide Note, 1964 As I prepared to take my life, I felt it necessary to assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. For once I woke and felt his presence. I want to walk and saw his form. I want to walk and heard his voice. I looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what I might next to experience. I can never wake. Goodbye. Found in that same winter box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose. One loose personal letter with no envelope. Dear Lenny, I pray for you. He spoke your name. A journal entry translated from Spanish, 1880. I've experienced the greatest terror. I've experienced the greatest horror. I've experienced the greatest terror. I seen his eyes when I closed mine. They are hollow, black. They saw me and pierced me, his wet hand. I would not sleep. His voice, an eligible text. A mariner log, 1691. He came to me in my sleep, from the foot of my bed. I felt a sensation. He took everything. We must return to England. We shall not return here. Request from the rake. From Witness, 2006. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family on the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted from our long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to awake him in the process. I apologized and told him, I though he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed. So quickly, his knee almost kicked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark half second, I was able to see what caused a strange reaction at the foot of the bed. Sitting facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort. His body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, or more concerned as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into a fetal position, occasionally glancing back before it returned to the creature. In a furry motion, the creature scrambled out of the side of the bed and called quickly, flailing some kind of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to five. It seemed like, just seemed like a while. Just looking at my husband, the creature then placed his hands on his knee and ran towards the hallway, leading to the kids' room. I screamed and ran for the light switch. The plan to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and 120 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall. Someone had a slaver. 
the the creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed it to help my daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke once more in her short life. He is the rake. My husband drove his car into the lake that night while rushing our daughter to the hospital. They did not survive. Being a small town, town news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first. The local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local television news never followed it up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house after we decided to return home. I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in our next town who had a familiar story. We, c we got in contact and began talking about our experiences. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen a creature we referred to as a rake. It took four of us about two solid years of haunting and haunting and hunting on the internet, writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any detail or history of follow-up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages. We never mentioned it again. The ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only what they were told by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. There were, however, many instances where the creature visit was one of the series of visits with the same person. Multiple people men should be a spoken to. My daughter included. This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us in the last encounter. I set up a digital recording on my bed, left it running every night and all night for two weeks. I tenaciously scanned through the sounds of me rolling around in my sleep each day when I woke up at the end of the second week. I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep. My blurring though recording at eight times normal speed. This almost took an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was a rake. I can't listen to it long enough to describe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I heard it before. I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything from it at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to the moment, and the thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not to see the rake. He ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. I fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me.